The poorest way to face life is to face it with a sneer. There are many men who feel a kind of twisted pride in cynicism. There are many who confine themselves to criticism of the way others do what they themselves dare not even attempt. There is no more unhealthy being, no man less worthy of respect, than he who either really holds or feigns to hold an attitude of sneering disbelief toward all that is great and lofty whether in achievement or in that noble effort which, even if it fails, comes to second achievement. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who was actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Hi there, welcome to uh, Tales and Mysteries of the Muhammad Patrol. I, I hope you can hear me. I bought a special microphone just for this camera, and apparently, it doesn't work. I just filmed the whole 15 minute segment, and um, nothing. Absolutely nothing. No sound. So, uh,. As you can hear, it's um, Independence Day. Actually sounds like uh, Allies storming uh, Normandy Beachhead right now. Uh, either Utah or Omaha, or it could be Gold or Juno or Sword. Anyway. To the Army and the Navy and the battles they have won, to the flag of freedom whose colors never run, and may the wings of liberty never lose a feather. I want to wish everybody out there a happy 4th of July. And I had a video about the spook lights, but... I hope, uh, but I can't, uh, I don't have enough battery right now to redo this video, so, um, hopefully you guys had a great, uh, 4th of July, um, and, um, I know it's kind of a short video, but, you know, lately, aren't people putting on really short videos? Just seems like it to me. A lot of people I'm watching Hootie Who and um, 
lot of Japanese people, uh, I follow a lot of Japanese uh, YouTubers, and they have really short videos. You know, like, some are like less than a minute. But um, anyway, I want to say uh, thank you all the veterans out there who served and yeah, it's getting pretty thick. Those uh, Jerry's on the ridge are catching hell right now, aren't they? Sounds like this on New Year's Eve right here, too. Make sure deflect a falling bullet, hopefully. And this is the night vision feature. What do you think? Does it add a level of spookiness to... Uh, you know, I got a couple of seconds. You know, one time when we were at the bunker, Wally and me, and this uh, years ago, uh, a friend of mine named Ray and his... Uh, brother-in-law, uh, Brian, real early in the morning, we were looking off towards the east, towards the Old Women Mountains, and Wally pointed out and says, hey, Bill, what kind of plane is that? And we looked out there, and it was a B-52, and it was flying, oh, it could have been five or 600 feet off the ground. It was below the level of the mountains, flying along the floor of the desert. It was probably about two, three miles out from us dead silent not one whisper of sound from uh, what does it have eight engines not one sound just gliding along not gliding it was under power dead silent we watched it from uh, the north end of the old one mountains traveling across the desert until it disappeared to the south of us. It's the only time I've ever seen one out there. But you could have heard a pin drop. I mean, the crackling of the fire was louder than the engines on that thing. I don't know if they were testing out some kind of technology, but let me tell you, I'm under fire here. I'm doing this at great risk. But let me... Now it's getting closer. Any of you combat vets know exactly what I'm talking about. Exactly. Anyway, I don't know if they're testing some new type of technology or, or what, but you could not hear anything. I think that was the same weekend uh, a Bradley fighting vehicle drove down Kidiz Road right past where we were camped with a bunch of Marines hanging off the back of it. They waved as it went by. They were friendly. Listen to that, huh? As a guy watching YouTube says, that's enough to make a grown man smile. I love that sound. Anyway, I still got battery left. What else can I throw in here real quick? Three times while we were camping out there, airplanes landed right on the Kidiz Road. Hey, I saw you guys here. Thought I'd stop and say hello. Uh, the first two times, there were two uh, Vietnam-era observation planes, uh, bird dogs. They were all tricked out, just like Nam. All tricked out. Beautiful airplanes, beautiful. Oversized tires for landing on uh, rough terrain. They landed just to talk, sat around, we had lunch, and they got in their planes and took off and to a destinations unknown.
Flash, Thunder. <laughs> you World War II buffs will know what I mean. Yeah, that's beer on ice. There's a great story behind that, but that story's for another time. I, uh, one winter, I had a buddy named, uh, well, I had a buddy named Jimmy. He's passed, too. And uh, Anyway, he shows up at the bunker. We had a big fire going. And there was a guy I used to work with named Tim. Big, tall biker guy. Big, strong guy. Wasn't afraid of anything. Oh. Wasn't afraid of anything. I'm going to have to uh, bleep that. Anyway. Jimmy broke out his lawn chair. He had this down jacket on. A brand new down jacket. And he reaches in and he pulls out a fifth of Scoresby's. And he starts knocking it back. I said, hey, man, you going to share some of that scotch? And he goes, no, no way. I said, why not? Reaches into his jacket and pulls out a second one. Because this one's for you. That was a hell of a night. Anyway, right in the middle of those bottles, he stands up and lights a cigarette. And he looks at me and goes, Will I ever tell you about how I could fire walk? I went, You can fire walk? Oh, buddy, easy. Watch. Well, there was a railroad tie we had on the fire that was straddling it, right? And he jumps up and he starts running across this log. Well, he gets halfway across this railroad tie and it rolls. And he brodies and augers into the fire. Well, Tim reaches right in and picks him up. And Jimmy was no small guy. And sets him on the ground and starts brushing him off. And he's like, hey, man, are you okay, man? Did you get burned? And Jimmy goes, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. Then I burned my jacket. And he's brushing all the ashes off his jacket and feathers are flying out of it, you know, stuff like that. He's all these holes burning in nylon. He's molting feathers all over the place. So the next day, you know, when he got up, he looks at his jacket, cussing a blue streak, breaks out the duct tape and duct tapes off the holes. <laughs> oh, my God. And then one time... And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where the camera ran out of battery. <laughs> so, uh, that's all you got to see of my great uh, 4th of July uh, video. Um, because I didn't realize it ran out of battery. I'm talking to nobody. And my wife came out after a few minutes. And she says, uh, uh, are you still talking? And I said, yeah. And I look over the camera. And it's blank. So I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm not. So I packed it in. And um, there you go. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. And I hope you uh, you and yours had a great 4th of July. I really do. I hope it was the best. Um, I had a good 4th of July. We had uh, barbecued hamburgers and corn on the cob and watermelon and macaroni salad. And Coca-Cola. We had a 4th of July. American, good old American 4th of July. All right? So, um, everybody, ciao for now. <laughs>